I'm going to just connect this to do's view here quickly to our MongoDB. Again, this means you have to have this one running. So your Mongo is, is up and running and it's listening at port 3000. And we're going to use the, uh, the routes we created in the previous video. So if I go back to my app, you can see I'm listening on port 3000. I'm going into routes and to do's. So basically what we did with Postman is just restarted because it updated. So uh, I'm just gonna get one post if it still works. So you can see here, right? This HTTP localhost 3000 to do's without the new one. So send, see if it works. And we made an, an error because post, I'm supposed to, I'm doing a get, whoopsie daisy. So let's do a get and then we get our information, right? So I know this path here will work. So this is the one I'm gonna use. In my Visual Studio, I'm just gonna close this one down again and go back to my to-dos here. So I'm just gonna reuse what I have here. I'm still gonna use Reactive for this one. You can also use, if you wanna use prefer refs. I can't really explain what's better than the other. I guess this somebody smarter than me can do this uh, online somewhere. Uh, it's just supposed to be one is for multiple and one is for primitive values and so on. But you, you should be able to just Google this. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to use reactive in this in this scenario here to test it. So instead of calling this test, I'm going to switch it to state uh, since it's uh, in my mind, it's like sort of view X here. And I'm going to create something called to do's in here where I'm going to create or use a uh, an object where I'm going to push in my author name and, and uh, author and the to do one right we have here. So here, of course, instead of returning test, so it's opened or exposed to the HTML so we can actually use it. So I'm just going to delete this up here. Um, but so we can use the HTML part or the template part, we need to expose it. So that's the first part of this we need. The next one is we need to create a function that is going to grab the information from online. I'm just standardly because this is sort of like vanilla JavaScript the way I'm going to do the first one here. So I'm just going to create a very standard function called get all. And in this one, I'm going to use the, um, the fetch, there we go, there we go. fetch for grabbing like I did in the previous ones. Oh, that's not true. I think I don't think I've used this yet. Uh, but anyway, so if you wanted to use Axios, you can, uh, that's fine. But I'm, I'm just going to use fetch for this one because I think it's just just as good. So I'm going to grab the link from here. So localhost 3000 to do's put this in my fetch here. And before you do this, remember to put it in quotation. So we make it a string so we can read it. And then I'm going to use some different promises to whoops, if you type it correctly, to when we get the data. So this is standard from whatever you've seen from anybody else, basically. So we have the data, if it resolved, then we save the response. Whoops. Uh, do it correctly and use the function arrow. And as before, we use the JSON uh, method here that takes everything that is being collected. So we take all this information and store this here in REST. If that promise is resolved, then we, I'm gonna call this data. Uh, so I'm not gonna call it the same as the other one, which would be weird. And I'm going to pass it into an object. And here is basically where I'm taking the response right here and using this iterate name, you can again change this to whatever you want, um, just as long as it fits with what I'm going to do in the next line. So this is where I'm going to tell it where to store the data. And I want you to store it in my constant up here, so in the state. So for it to put each of my, uh, this one in here, right now I only have one, right? So it, this object here, I want this to be passed into this to do here. So I'm going to do state to grab that one first and then to do's. So this is where I wanted to store it. And then I need to tell it what do I want to store, which is basically the data I'm being passed in here. So right, grab information. If this is resolved, then you take the response you have. Uh, and if this is true, if it's as containing data, if there's no errors and so on, I'm taking or reusing the iterative name of, of data. And this is the thing I want to store here. So once I once this is run through, hopefully this data will be stored in this one here. So we can do a, different, a few different things to test this, but I'm gonna do this one first. So I'm gonna give you an error now, uh, so you can see 
that if we forget different things, then the system will like, because we're using composition, we need to do a little bit more than compared to view two. So here it says get all is defined, but never used, which is fine because we're not using it anywhere, right? So let's go up to our div up here and I'm just gonna call, create a new div. Uh, yay, it actually worked for me today. So I'm gonna do a V4 equal and I'm going to put item in whoops state dot to do right this is where the information is stored right now and I'm going to use the key and what my key will be just key and then in this case uh, author author name that's uh, I should do the ID but I'm not going to do it right now uh, and in here I'm just going to do a let's do an h4 whoops if it actually want to help me it doesn't because I don't know why H42, cool. And complete. This is so annoying, it doesn't want to help me, but whatever. So in here, I'm just going to pass or use the iterative name of item because for each time it goes through, this is what we want. And I'm just gonna print out the author for now. So we can do one for, uh, for the other one as well, but let's switch this to a paragraph. And this will be the to do, right? if it's called without a S, so the to-dos. You can also check the data you have in here if you just open your browser and pass in the link up here. And then if you have, in, I have installed a, a plugin for Chrome to actually show, so this is what the raw data and this is past data you can do. So this is the extension for me. I can't remember the name though. Anyway, so let's click save and we still get this error. Uh, because even though we're trying to use it up here, oops, um, it's still giving me an undefined because we need to expose it to the template or to the component as well. So we need to go down to into our return and then we need to type in the name of the function I want to return, which is get all right now. So this go here and we still don't have anything. So we can click console log and we, this is just ugh, some stuff here. Uh, about not being up to date. And if I go into view, if you have this, again, this is an extension uh, for view. This is the, the, I don't know if it's called beta still, but it's the newest version of it. And this is just awesome. So if you have this installed, you can just right click, inspect and go to view. And this will give you a overview uh, of data is being stored in the specific components. So I can go through all routes and so on and so on. But right now I can see my state is exposed. So I know that one is working. I can see my to-dos is exposed. I can see I have a setup down here, but it doesn't really work yet. Whoops, I clicked something, uh, close. Oh, uh, in here as well, you can see I have this sort of just get all, right? This indicates it's a function, but it's not really being fired right now. So we need to tell the system because I created it like this, that this function has to be fired. Now, I can just do it like this, and I will do it like this because it's just the easy solution. Uh, get all, like you would fire a normal function in vanilla JavaScript, but I'm gonna just take this and put it in the correct place. So outside here, uh, nope, this was correct. I forgot it was in there. So let's see if this has any change to our system. So we can now see we have BART and skating. This means that our to-dos is now working because now it's not no longer being undefined because we are having it here. Then I'm actually running the function to see if anything happens here. And in my browser, I can now see in my to-dos list, uh, provide I'm gonna minimize this. I can actually see now in my setup here, I have states and an array now, which is not no longer empty. So. If I expand this, I can see the ID that's coming from Mongoose, not Mongoose, Mongo database. If I go to Postman, I can see this is the ID here, right? So the one Mongo, Mongo created for us. We are ha having this here. We have Bart set up and we have Bart and we have the skating part, right? So this is basically what we set up in the previous videos. Now, let's go back to this one here. So just show you what uh, a little little thing we can do if like what, what's happening why is nothing working here so we can use the debugger if you don't know this this is an excellent tool you, i think you can also activate it by clicking here uh, and you can also activate it straight into the uh, into the, the, the browser here so if i click this i was expecting this to be run because it's a debugger they need to stop the system so I put this in and i'm expecting it to basically stop whatever's happening once it gets to this stage right so that's what the debugger do, and then we can track the data to see if everything works correctly. But it doesn't run, 
and I don't get an error. So once you get a little bit more familiar with view, you can kind of figure out, well, it's not running because this function is not getting fired. I'm passing it, so it's exposed and so on and so on. But it's because I actually didn't do this part. So once we do this again and we go back to the browser, you can see right now this is paused in debugger mode. And this, again, if it doesn't pop up here, you have it will open this, but it's in the source folder. If it doesn't show, then just do a refresh again. Then usually it pops to the correct area. But we can use this debugger to track data. So if I, for example, hover different things. So if I hover the then, not the then, the response here, I don't get anything. I need to go all the way down to data. But if I hover the data here, you can see I get an array. Right now I'm only getting Barton skating because there's only one in here, right? Or if I hover state or data down here, again, I can see I'm actually the data that I'm getting here. It's also in here. So I know it's correct. And if I hover here, this is where I'm storing it. I can expand, oops, not the handle, the target. And I can actually see that this is in here. So I know the data is actually being stored in my system. So this is one way to track them if you want to. And the other one was, would be with view. I can do that with a debugger running. So if you can also see it in here, so it's sort of the same thing, but sometimes you can't really use view if it's like weird things or this this specific plugin here and the other one works better and again we can use this to track things so if i wrote something incorrectly up here oh i don't know if i get an error i don't but i can see there's no errors in my system right but i'm not getting the actual information uh, right now even though it says "Ooh, i got the stuff here blah -de blah blah and then usually you could would go like where's my error and then you would do, use debugger and eventually and hopefully you will figure out that is this point here that uh, that is the issue not the actual code down here just a quick little extra thing for this one i just want to show the the unmounted part as well so i just remove the get all here if you want to use some of the lifecycle hooks you can you can just import them up here and the, and the one i want to use is unmounted uh, like this one Ooh, we just added too much so let's just revert to this one. So here, now I'm able to use the unmounted lifecycle hook. And there's like unmounted, unupdated, and so on and so on. Just before, I'll make sure that this is inside the setup here. So setup starts here and here. So before the return, I'm going to use my unmounted. And it looks like this when I want to use it like this. Don't remove this here. And unmounted is the lifecycle hooks before the component is actually created. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to call this function here. So this is a little bit like better way of writing it instead of just calling the function here. So if we do this quickly and we can go back and test and I still have, the, I'm going to remove the debugger because it's annoying. Uh, so let's do a refresh and this here and now you can see this is being called. I could do a little like console login here if I want to, so you can see where it actually is, but it's one of the lifecycle hooks we can use.